It's time for our last uh, lightning speaker of, uh, of the batch. Um, she's uh, from Netflix. She will highlight some of the aspects of uh, their development process. And I think she is the, um, the person with the um, most beautiful name in our entire lineup. Please make some noise for Mrs. Feather Knee. Hello. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Uh, so, as mentioned, I'm Feather Nee. I'm a software engineer at Netflix, and I work on the Studio Tools team. How many of you have Netflix accounts? Some of you? Maybe one or two? Okay, maybe a lot of you. Um, <laughs> so, when you log on to Netflix.com, you don't see anything that I've ever written. That's a disclaimer. Um, but you will see things that uh, we've made decisions about based on the tool that I'm writing. So I'm writing a decision-making tool that's an internal tool at Netflix. So the goal of our tool is to pick the best content. And best content, that's kind of subjective, right? Um, so it could mean a lot of things to a lot of people. It could mean that you're um, breaking stereotypes, you're pushing creative boundaries, you're winning awards. So do we try to do those things? Um, yes, we do. But most importantly, we try to figure out what most people are going to watch. And how do we know what you'll watch? Um, in fact, we don't. We have no idea. Um, we make educated guesses based on statistical models. So um, statistical models are not always um, this beautiful. <laughs> how many of you have ever seen this movie? I'm just curious. All right, right on. I felt like this might be an American reference that wouldn't carry over. So, um, so <laughs> yeah, so we use a lot of math, um, math another gratuitous math joke. Um, and you can think of these as kind of like big word problems that don't really have a right answer, uh, which is a lot of fun. But we still manage to get it right uh, a lot of the time. So uh, last November, we decided to start writing this app. and. Um, it was kind of a, a, an interesting time uh, in the United States. As some of you may know, we, we elected a very strange person for president. Um, <laughs> so we also decided to rewrite this application that had originally been written in Angular 1. And uh, one of us was an Ember developer, and the other of us was an Angular developer. And we decided to come together and write this application in React. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so yeah, stranger things have happened. <laughs> Um, the, really, the hardest part really was just getting started. There's all that kind of decision fatigue up front. Uh, if you come from a background with like Angular or Ember, you have this command line uh, tool that will allow you to just sort of generate a whole application uh, from the very, just the command line. Um, so we learned a couple of things along the way. One of them was to lift up state. The other was to keep it simple. And uh, when I say lift up state, <laughs> I had a kind of a fun lesson with this, which is uh, I wrote all these modals, and these modals go out and execute actions. And I thought originally that I should just execute those actions in the modal. And I realized, no, actually, the modal needs to pass that state back up to the kind of parent class. Um, I have a funny story about that if anybody wants to hear it. Um, we don't really have time right now. Uh, so uh, we also started out in our application, we just thought, oh, we're writing a React app, we're going to use Redux. We had all these reducers. And then we realized we don't really need Redux. So we took it out. We just used set state. And um, it set us up really nicely for when our application does need more complexity. Um, and then I came across this quote, and I realized, all right, backed up. So if we do decide that we're going to need more complex state management, we'll probably use MobX. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason that we would choose MobX is that there's a lot less boilerplate. And we're also already using a, an observable in our application. Um, we've kind of uh, slowly started using a little bit of RxJS in our application. So we made some good choices. We use uh, ES6 class syntax. Um, Stateless functional components are fantastic for keeping state managed and container components, which I think you already heard about from Max's talk. 
We also use a lot of test coverage to increase our confidence. We're kind of new to the, the application um, library. So um, I don't know, how many of you have heard of Just Testing or have you used Just? So we use Just Snapshots. We really like those. Um, but most of our unit tests are in Enzyme. Um, we're also using RxJS extensions, and that's been really fun, and, and they're kind of creeping into our application more and more. Um, we're also using React Select and um, love React Select. React Icons is great. You can just bring in one or two icons that you need. You don't bring in a whole entire library of icons. Um, so I've really been enjoying that. We uh, decided to write our own modals and our own filtered data tables. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to find me at break time. And that's it. Thank you.